Team Sacramento and the Clippers, of course. But uh, did you see something offensively that was clicking for you guys that just didn't carry over today? Yeah, I think the, I think we didn't do a good enough job of playing uh, togetherness, uh, togetherness basketball on the uh, offensive end. I think that's probably the number one thing that really stood out from Sacramento to the Clippers. And I think that you know, for us during this time, if we're, we're going to have a shot to win games, you know, we have to play uh, and trust the next guy on the. Um, on our team, and I don't think that was the case. You know, I think in the, the Sacramento game, we did a great job of getting off the ball and hitting the open guy. And uh, tonight, you know, I don't think we had too many of those driving kick three opportunities that you saw during uh, the Sacramento game. So, nothing that was the difference. And then, Chris, how do you look ahead at this five-game trip in terms of opportunities to win games? And you're, it sounds like you're likely going to still be without LeBron and AD. We'll see about Drummond uh, and Wesley Matthews. But how, what's the overall mindset looking ahead to these five? I mean, we just got to get back to what we did. Uh, you know, if you look back at those three wins that we had um, so far, you know, it, it starts with playing the right way on offense. You know, defense never worried. I think we we've done a pretty good job of every game we played outside of maybe one game uh, from a defensive standpoint. Uh, you know, even tonight, you know, we held to you know one or four or whatever it was. You know, our, our thing is is offensively playing the right way, trusting the pass, uh, giving yourself to the team. And, you know, if we can do that. Um, no, I think, I think we'll give ourselves a chance. Kyle, how do you look ahead to this five-game road trip uh, coming up uh, based on where you are? Uh, and obviously, as Mike mentioned, the, the personality not, not being at full strength. Um, you know, I, I kind of just said it. You know, I think where we're at, we got to just play the right way on the offensive end. You know, like I said, defensively, we'll be all right. You know, we'll compete. We'll uh, challenge most opponents. But offensively, we got to find ways to play together and uh, put points on the board. Um, can't win games scoring 80s and 80s and 90s. You know, We've got to you know, figure out ways to you know, incorporate everyone and everyone get the ball and touch it. Um, you know, have opportunities to score. Thanks, Kyle. Dan Wiki. Um, I think I asked you earlier in the stretch uh, about kind of the lumps that you thought this team would take and stuff like that. Um, how, how has it been kind of what you expected with, without LeBron and AD? Um, has, has there been anything that surprised you? Has there been anything that you think you guys have been able to do pretty well um, just during the stretch? Well, I think, uh, you know, trying to find something positive out of the stretch is from a defensive standpoint. I think we've, uh, you know, kind of, a solid job on that end. Uh, you know, obviously not being the number one defense, but you know, you know, we we've got a few opponents to uh, under 100 defensive rating. You know, that's something that is going to carry over. And uh, yeah, I think that's the the positive out of this. So, have you looked at standings at all during the stretch and kind of where you guys are at? And is that is that a concern at all? Uh, no. talk a lot about next man mentality where you guys are at injury wise I mean there's not there's not a lot of next men for the guys who are playing right now um does that sort of have a weight to it knowing that you guys are sort of the last line of defense and and, and do, does it feel a little mentally grinding at all or, or where are you at with it no I don't think it feels mentally grinding I think that you know obviously uh every game you see you know, when you see someone out, it's like, damn, you know, because, you know, you, you always want your teammates to be there. And um, as, in, as individuals, uh, for the guys that are hurt, you know, you, you want to be able to be available for your teammates. So, obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's not good 
it's definitely not good. But at the same time, you know, these are the cars that were dealt, and you know, we got to figure it out. Got to figure it out from us. Figure it out from our coaching staff to put us in the right position, and we got to go out there and execute and uh, do our job as well. So, uh, you know, can't pity on it. Can't have a pity party. We have time for one more, please. Let's go to Nick Hamilton. Hey, Kyle. Uh, can you talk a little bit about just the effort of uh, Taylor Horton Tucker? It seemed like uh, he's really been coming off the bench and really giving our effort, trying to give you guys some type of spark. Uh, what does this effort mean to you all uh, in various situations? Um, yeah, Taylor, Taylor's, uh, you know, he's, he's got a reputation as a scorer. He's someone that can uh, fill it up uh, when he has a chance and opportunity to. Um, you know, I, I think for him, you know, you know, he just still has to, you know, understand and recognize, um, you know, the flow of the game and understanding uh, certain situations. Uh, you know, he's obviously a great talent, and, you know, for him and us, we need him to continue to do what he's doing, but also, um, you know, continue to play, make, and, and make others better. You know, he has a, uh, he's been blessed with a, a gift to be able to get in the paint anytime he wants. And uh, with that being said, getting into paint means, you know, weak side opportunities to find other guys' shots and, um, you know, spark a teammate. And, you know, I just, I think very highly of him. And I think that, you know, he can do that for us at a high level. Hopefully he can get there for us.